third segment of Reset. In coordination with the Student Activities and Leadership Development Office, we bring to you the information and resources it will take for your organization to continue succeeding next year. Here's a quick overview of what we'll be sharing with you today. First, we'll recap the Student Activities Board, or SAB, give you an idea of what to expect after you submit your Reset application today, walk you through a very few important processes in the form of short videos, and give you a way to reach out to SAB online and in person. SAB's mission statement is as follows. The Student Activities Board works cooperatively with the Office of Student Activities and Leadership Development and student government to promote student involvement on campus. We accomplish our mission statement by upholding three pillars, promotion, registration, and regulation. First pillar, promotion. SAP promotes student involvement in registered student organizations through biannual organization fairs, recognition of student leadership through special events, and special organizational programming. For our second pillar, registration, SAB registers new organizations and coordinates the annual re-registration process or reset for existing registered student organizations. And for our third pillar, regulation, SAB regulates in accordance with various university policies and works with newly formed groups or leaders so that they may achieve an organized, positive, and enriching experience. Here's a quick recap about the re-registration process or reset. In concordance with our registration pillar, SAB coordinates the annual re-registration process for existing registered student organizations. RESET stands for Registration Enrichment Support and Educational Training, and it's a process that all registered student organizations, or RSOs, must complete annually to stay up to date on university policies. RESET must be completed by the president of the RSO. Of particular notice, Organizations that have not completed RESET in two years must apply as a new student organization. There are two main phases for re-registration. Phase 1 is from April 1st to May 15th, and Phase 2 is from August 1st to September 15th. Your organization may choose to register during either of these periods. Note that the sooner your organization submits the re-registration application, the faster you can be approved and access exclusive privileges available to RSOs. Organizations that have already transitioned for fall 2020 should complete the recess pro reset process during phase one. Please note that the incoming president should be filling out this application. Once the application closes, organizations that have missed the deadline will need to submit during phase two. Organizations that transition to a new president after May 15th should re-register during phase two. In addition, if your organization missed the Phase 1 re-registration period, you may complete reset at this time. After you submit your application. Upon receiving your submission, SAB will review your application. Your application will be evaluated for completeness and compliance with SAB, UFB, SALD, and university policies. Then, SAB will return the decision of denied or approved. See the following slides for how to proceed. Every Friday, there will be an updated list of approved RSOs found on SAB's website. What do you do if your application is denied? We'd like to add that it's common to get your application denied. This does not mean that you are unable to become an RSO for the year. Instead, if your organization is denied, an SAB consultant will attach comments to your reset submission to let you know what changes are requested. You'll get an email um, with all of these changes. Please note that you do not need to start a new submission to make changes. Here's a quick guide on how to make edits to your denied application. Navigate to campuslink.uc.edu, log in using your 6 plus 2, then click your initials in the top right corner. Select My Submissions, then select Organization Re-Registrations, which is the middle tab. Click on 2020-2021 re-registration application to access your reset submission. Here, you can go in and make changes to your application. Once you're done, resubmit and wait for a response. You should hear back from SAB within two weeks. To access and edit your organization's re-registration if it has been denied, go ahead and click um, on your initials or your photo up here 
and then go to submissions. If you go over to organization registrations, you, at the top of the list, you should see your organization uh, and you should be able to click um, on this view icon over here to access your organization's re-registration application. After you go ahead and make the necessary edits, you can go ahead and submit that once again. Um, and then after that, it will be submitted to SAB for review once again, approved. What's next? First, update your student organization's portal on Campus Link, including your roster, primary contact, forms, events, meeting information, etc. Through a reset, you should have had an opportunity to RSVP for the Fall Organization Fair. If you wish to make edits to your RSVP, you can reach out to SAB. Lastly, keep in touch with SAB for opportunities to spotlight your organization or attend one of our annual events. Here's a quick guide on how to manage your organization's Campus Link page. First, go to campuslink.uc.edu and log in using your 6 plus 2. Search for your organization and click Manage Organization in the top right. Click the three lines in the top left corner and hit Organizational Tools. Navigate to the tab you're interested, for example, Forms, Roster, Finances, etc., and use the blue buttons to carry out actions. Here's a quick video summarizing these steps. How to manage your organization's Campus Link page. Um, so the first step um, after you log in is to search for your organization. It may already pop up here, so feel free to go ahead and click on that here. Once you do so, it'll pull up your organization's Campus Link page. And up here in the top right, it has this button called Manage Organizations. So go ahead and click that. And then if you, so this is your organization's Campus Link homepage. Um, and if you click here, you can op open up all the different tools that your organization has available to them. Um, so for example, if you want to edit the roster, you can click here. If you want to edit or add any forms, you can click here. Um, if you want to edit any documents that your organization has, you can click here. Um, and if you want to edit pictures and things like that, you can click here. This is a comprehensive list of privileges that are available if your organization's re-registration submission is approved. You can reserve space on campus for meetings and approved activities, host a campus link page, conduct approved fundraising projects on campus, coordinate activities with other student organizations and participate in events such as homecoming, welcome week, and or organization fairs. Use a mailing address at the University of Cincinnati. Apply for funding through the University Funding Board, if eligible. Participate in new student or orientation and the fall and spring organization fairs. Nominate candidates for homecoming court, apply for university awards, and rent vehicles for organization travel. Next up is a quick tutorial on how to schedule rooms for meetings and events in 25 Live. For more information, visit Conference and Event Services webpage. Here's a quick video showing you how to navigate 25 Live. I'm going to be taking you step by step on how to reserve a room on 25 Live. Um, to start, you can type in schedule.uc.edu in the search bar, and then it'll take you to this page. You'll go ahead and log in using your 6 plus 2 and whatever UC password that you have. So we're going to go ahead and create an event. And it'll take you to this page. Um, so this is basically the page where you can request any available rooms at UC. Um, we're just going to go ahead and do ASA exec for the event name. Um, same thing for the title on the calendars, ASA exec. And then the event type. Um, so here it shows you every single event that you could have with a UC student organization. For us, we will go ahead and just do a meeting. Sponsored organization, this is the organization that you are a part of and you need one to reserve a room on 25 Live. Expected attendance, we will say 10, just because there's not that many of us. Event description, um, it's fairly simple, especially for this. I can just say ASA weekly executive meeting. So the date and time, um, for us, we usually do Wednesday, so we'll just do April 1st. We do 
5 to 7.30. And then this event begins and ends on the same day. We'll click that. If you unclick it, you would pick the following date and where the event would end. But usually we don't really have events that last more than one full day. Um, so down here, you're going to see locations. So you can pick whatever building that is available. Um, usually people like to do TUC. So you can search TUC. And right here it shows you if it is available or not. It shows you the room number. It shows you the written out number and the capacity and all of the conflict details um, of why it's unavailable. So if you scroll down, you can see that they are unavailable. This is just due to the certain situation that we are in right now. Um, but if they were available, it would just show right here and then you would click add. And resources. This is super important if you are holding big events. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to write how you would like to set up to be, what kind of um, equipment you'll need, speakers, mics, all that. Um, attach files. This is just maybe if you want to add a flyer with the event just so they don't have any questions at like the conference and event services. So day of event contact name. I will write my own name. And then phone number. And then it says requester and schedule right over here. And so this is just a helpful hint for requirements um, just so they know what kind of event this is. So this is nothing that really goes with our executive meeting. So I will just do nothing of the above. And then to finish off, you just hit I agree to all the policies and you just hit save and then it'll get um, put you to a new page and then you will get your confirmation email um, through your UC email. Next up is a quick tutorial on how to access SALD's Registered Student Organization Handbook. Here's a quick video showing you how to access and navigate the RSO Handbook. This is a quick guide on how to access the Registered Student Organization Handbook provided by the Student Activities and Leadership Development Office. First step is to navigate to the website, which is located at uc.edu backslash SALD. Next, you can go here to Student Organizations and select Manage Your Organization. And linked here is the 2019-2020 Registered Student Organization Handbook. The RSO is published by the Student Activities and Leadership Development Office and contains information about the registered student organizations at the University of Cincinnati, organization requirements, resources that are available to your student organization, as well as policies and student organization conduct. From the RSO handbook, here are a few officer and advisor requirements that you should be familiar with. Officers must be enrolled matriculating students. All officers must achieve and maintain a 2.3 GPA and be in compliance with all other policies and procedures as noted. Please note that at minimum, your organization must have a president, treasurer, and an advisor. Advisors are required to complete online training before assuming their role and to maintain their status as an advisor. They are required to be faculty, staff, or administrative advisors. Graduate assistants may serve as student organization advisors if listed as a duty on their job description. They are required to be listed as advisor on your organization's Campus Link roster. Lastly, they must sign or approve financial requests and other pertinent documents. From the RSO Handbook, here's a comprehensive overview of the posting policy. Your post must include the name of the organization and be advertising a specific event or occurrence. There may be no more than five posters, handbills, or flyers displayed by any one student organization or group in one area. Posters must be removed one day after the event. No tape or adhesive may be used. And finally, postings are prohibited on glass surfaces, painted surfaces, utility poles, all university buildings, wall, construction walls and materials, signage, trees, open spaced, paved surfaces, or earth surfaces. From the RSO handbook, here's a comprehensive overview of our chalking policy. 
Chalking on campus is limited to RSOs, university groups, or registered students. Chalking is permitted only on horizontal surfaces in open areas directly washed by rain. Chalking must bear the name of the sponsoring organization. Messaging must be for a campus-wide event open to all students. Chalk must be water-soluble. And lastly, chalking is not permitted on street pavers. Chalking offense con offensive content located in chalking notices is prohibited. Membership burnout de develops gradually as a result of extreme workplace stress that is not effectively managed. The tricky thing about burnout is that it is like a slow fizzle, one that builds over time before the explosion. Burnout is particularly helpful among leaders who are of course always almost chronic achievers. Here's a helpful ant out from the Student Wellness Center that provides you with tips to implement in your own leadership and share with other leaders in your organization. Schedule relaxation. Challenge yourself, but don't overcommit. Schedule time to eat uninterrupted. Sleep at least eight to 10 hours a night. Schedule time to study. Delegate, set boundaries, practice saying no, and practice self-care. If you feel like you're experiencing burnout, there are resources to help, which include the CAPS 24-hour crisis helpline, the Student Wellness Center, and the University Health Services. Thanks for listening along. SAB hosts annual events including the Fall and Spring Organization Fair, the Celebration of Student Involvement, and Evening with the Organizations. These events offer your organization an opportunity for promotion and programming. Lastly, we encourage you to get in touch with us online by emailing us at sab at mail.uc.edu or following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at sab underscore uc for an opportunity to spotlight your organization and to win university awards. To get in touch with us in person, you can visit our office at 655 Stager Student Life Center. We host office hours from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays and meet in person at 6 p.m. on Thursdays in TUC 425. Thanks for listening.